Hi, it's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. It's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and Matty Maltlake's orchestra. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hey, will you stop that yelling? What is all that adhesive tape on your face for? I took Susan Miller to my neighborhood theater to see The Razor's Edge. I sat so close to the screen that Tyrone Power shaved me five times. <laughs> your neighborhood theater is just showing that old picture now? What do you expect for three cents? <laughs> oh, it was a small picture, though. It all takes place in a barber shop run by a rough guy named Dan. Dan? Yeah, Dan Drop. <laughs> Tyrone Power, a sharp young blade who's keen about Gene Tierney, Every time he scissor, he works himself into a lather. But, but she strops him. She gives him the brush. It's no soap. And the rub comes in the end where he whiskers her away. And the moral of the story is no brush, no lather, no rubbing, no girl, no nothing, no joke, no money. <laughs> you idiot. You never saw the picture. And furthermore, I'll bet when you went to school, you were a dumbbell. Well, a yeah. dumb scout. If that's all, I'll yeah. have you know that I was a head and shoulders... Above everybody in my class. You were? Yes, I was 15 years older than any one of them. <laughs> I would like to be in school, Lou. I was teacher's pet. Teacher's pet? Yes, we both got expelled the same day. Uh... Oh, get him out of here. Oh, they're hot tonight. So don't go away. Abbott and Costello will be back after just the time it takes to tell this. There may be a housing shortage, but tonight, there may not be for some contestants on Go for the House. This is the exciting show heard every Wednesday night over most oh, ABC stations on which contestants can win a beautiful new honeymoon house built on a suburban lot right in their own hometown. Each Wednesday night, MC John Reed King calls seven couples to the ABC microphone. These couples each select a room of honeymoon house to furnish and are given seven questions to answer. As they answer each question correctly, a prize of some home furnishing goes into the house. After the third question, they can take their prizes or go for the house. But to win the house, they must answer the special seventh question. The listeners also have an opportunity to win Honeymoon House. For complete details, don't miss Go for the House on the air tonight and every Wednesday night over most of these very same ABC stations. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello show. girl I saw you talking with. Huh? Who's that girl I saw you talking with? That girl was my school day sweetheart. Her and I used to hook rides on the ice wagon together. Every day we'd ride seven miles of school sitting on a big cake of ice. You, you rode seven miles sitting on a cake of ice? Yeah, we were the original dead-end kids. I... <laughs> I'll forget about her. By the way, uh, where did you get that bump on your nose? Well, Monday night I went over to Susan Miller's house and I brought her a package of bubble gum. We sat on the sofa and I had my arm around her and she was chewing a bubble gum. But how did you get the bump on your nose? How did I get the bump on my nose? Just as I leaned over to kiss her, she had a blow up. <laughs> <laughs> that must have gummed up your evening. <laughs> Not only that, but I may have to have my nose vulcanized. <laughs> you talk sense, what happened? Susan dropped her bubble gum on the sofa and I sat in it. Brother, is that stuff sticky? Did it damage your clothes? No, but now I've got the only pair of pants in Hollywood with slip covers. <laughs> now, stop this silliness. Uh, you'd better be on your good behavior from now on because Susan Miller is moving into our boarding house today. She's taking the room directly above you, Lou. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Me in room 115 and Susan in 215. Abbott, will Susan be in that room all the time? Well, you know, Susan, she goes in and out. 
Have you noticed that too, Abbott? <laughs> well, anyway, Abbott, you know what I say? I say that, uh... You better you say know. something. I say that I'm all stuck for us. Oh, this is wonderful. The woman I love living right upstairs. Oh, stop, Costello. You're not in love with Susan. She's just a passing fancy. Abbott, I wouldn't pass up anything that fancy. <laughs> Gee, but I hope she likes her room. Oh, she should like it. She gets bored with it. I'm glad to hear that, too, because after all... <laughs> what did you say? I, I said she should be happy. She gets bored with the room. If she gets bored with the room, then why did she rent it in the first place? She's not bored with the room. She's very happy. You just told me that she gets bored with the room. That's right. One of us is nuts. <laughs> How can a girl be happy when she's bored all the time? Look, she's not bored all the time. The no. She only gets bored three times a day. Where is she getting all that lumber? <laughs> I'm not talking about lumber. I'm talking about boards. Susan eats her boards. Who feeds her all these boards? <laughs> a landlady. Susan made arrangements with the landlady to eat her board three times a day. Thirty days a month. I'm moving out of that place. Why? That Susan Miller's going to eat me out of house and home. <laughs> yes, and I'm just trying to tell you that Susan is very happy with her board and she likes her room. That room hasn't got a floor in it. There's a cute kid. Just rented the room today already. She ate the floor. <laughs> she did not eat the floor. I simply said there was no floor in the room. You could be mistaken, you know. Anybody that will eat boards three times a day is liable to eat the floor and the doors and the windows. Look, what are you getting so excited about? What business is it of yours what she does with her room? I'll make it my business, brother. Her floor happens to be my ceiling. I don't mind you knocking the pots from under me every week, but I ain't gonna let that Susan Miller eat the roof over my head. Costello, <laughs> you annoy me. All I said was there is not a floor in Susan's room. Just a second, Abbott. Have you, have you been to Susan's room? I have. You opened up the door? Yes. You stepped into the room? I did. What did you step on? The floor. Ladies and gentlemen, this man has deliberately and with molasses up a thought been misinforming the public. I rest my case. All yes. right, Costello, there's no, there's no sense in getting yourself into a frenzy. A what? Frenzy, frenzy. I ain't make a frenzy with nobody. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to explain by giving you an example. You, you have a floor in your room. The plaster is all cracked, so you have a floor in your ceiling. I got a floor in my ceiling? How do you like that? I've been living upside down for six years and didn't know it. <laughs> I tell you, you're all mixed up. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tell you that Susan's room is perfect. It has no floor and she's happy because she gets bored with the room. Here we go again. <laughs> the reason why she likes to get bored with the room is because she's hungry after a hard day at the studio and rushes home and eats like a beaver. Now he's got her eating beaver board. <laughs> Costello, I don't know why I get into these arguments with you. We argue and fight, and it always ends up the same way. You're just plain stupid. I am not. I'm pretty smart. Costello, if you're smart, I'm a monkey's uncle. Well, I am smart. Now, let me see you hang by your tail. <laughs> oh, Mr. Costello, Mr. Costello. Yes, yes. Oh, he's back again. Every week, the same thing. Look, Norman, why don't you go out here and get yourself a job? Oh, I've got a job, Mr. Costello. You see, I work in a domino factory. I put the dots on the dominoes. Why ain't you working now? This week, we're making blanks. <laughs> That's exactly what your check's going to look like. <laughs> well, enough of this nonsense, Costello. Have you been studying your script for the uh, new scenes in our new picture, The New Sang Tsai? Well, I meant to tell you, Abbott, they're changing the script again, and the director's coming over here tonight to rehearse me in the new scenes. Ah, oh, there you are, Costello. I've got the script here for the retakes on The New Sang Tsai. Now, you're going to run through it right now. In this scene... You'll play opposite the gorgeous, glamorous Lauren Bacall. Stand by, folks. There's good news tonight. <laughs> so you, you like Lauren Bacall, eh? Like her. There's a girl that has got this and that and them and those, and if you want anything else, just whistle. <laughs> Very good. I'm glad you like her, Costello, because in this scene, you and Lauren Bacall are seated in a canoe, drifting lazily down the stream. She's sitting in the bow, and you're sitting in the stern. She's in the bow, and I'm in the stern. That's right. You couldn't make that a rowboat and get both of us in the back seat. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Now, as you sit there in the stern of the canoe, 
paddling along, she looks at you, and her eyes seem to say, Come to me, Costello. Come to me, my love. <laughs> Is that what her eyes say? Yes. Then why don't I drop that darn paddle and come to her? No, 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 Costello, you ignore her. You keep paddling. You need the exercise. Yeah, but I need the exercise, but this could lead to ulcers. Right. <laughs> you're playing hard to get. After all, you're a city slicker. City slicker? I'm a village idiot. That's what I am. Oh. <laughs> Quiet, Castle. Please, pay attention to the director. Now then, Costello, a strange feeling commences to creep over you. You're seated in that canoe all alone with Lauren Bacall. You get a feeling that you can't sit still for another minute. A feeling that you must rise to your feet. It's those cane bottom canoe seats. They'll do it every time. <laughs> the seats have nothing to do with of it. Of course not. Now, Costello, you look forward at gorgeous Lauren Bacall. You look forward, and there she is in all her tempting glory. You can't stand the suspense any longer. Slowly, you begin to inch your way forward, inch by inch. Inch by inch? Foot by foot. By foot? Yard by yard. Get me up there, will you? I've only got this boat rented for an hour. <laughs> oh, it's impossible, Mr. Rabbit. I can't, I can't rehearse with this man. He's too nervous. He should see a doctor about his nerves. You should see a doctor about your face. What's the matter with my face? It talks too much. <laughs> While the boys are backstage cooking up the next act, let's eavesdrop on this. When someone with a secret microphone comes in contact with an unsuspecting individual with human reactions, the result is Candid Microphone, a Thursday night program that's rapidly capturing the interest of ABC listeners everywhere. Candid Microphone is a program that tests people's honest reactions in various situations. And what they say or do is secretly recorded by a man with a concealed mic. For instance, he may ask a strange girl in the park for a date, and when she answers him, she answers candidly, not knowing she's being recorded. Or the man with the mic may record the conversation of a man in a restaurant who suddenly finds he's left his wallet in the proverbial other suit and can't pay his check. But whatever is secretly recorded does not go on the air until the man with the mic has received the full permission of the person or persons recorded. Don't miss Candid Microphone tomorrow night over most of these same ABC stations. And now, back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Hurry up, Costello. We're on in just a second. That's right, Abbott, but here's a small place to show off Susan Miller. Let's get her to sing a song. Okay, Costello. Ladies and gentlemen, here's our singing star, Susan Miller, with the music of Maddie Malnick. the canoe. I look up at Lauren Bacall and say, the color lilies are in bloom again. I love the color lilies. 
Yes, father. Yes, mother. The color of his arm bloom again. Costello, what are you doing? Rehearsing a scene for the picture. I'm acting. I'm acting. What an actor I am, Abbott. If my mother hadn't cut off my curls when I was little, I'd have been another Shirley Temple. <laughs> well, you got out of my silly acting. <laughs> and you don't need to worry anymore about the picture. They're not going to change it. However, I have some news for you, Lou, but I don't know... I really don't know how to tell you this, Costello. But your country has called you. You mean I've been drafted again? <laughs> no, 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 you dummy. You're about to receive a great honor. Listen to this telegram that just came for you. It's from Mayor DeVita of Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, dear Lou, you have been chosen to represent Patterson, New Jersey at the next meeting of the UNO. I have? Yes. You've heard of the UNO, haven't you? Oh, I hear about it every time I try to make a date with a girl. What do you mean? Every time I ask a girl for a date, she looks at me and says, You? And no. no. <laughs> you know, the, the UNO is an organization of all the nations of the world. Costello, a great honor has been conferred on you. You will serve your country as a diplomat. You will be a, a statesman, an official of the government, a man who mingles with royalty. I'm going to be all that? That's right. Abbott? You may kiss my hand. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why the mayor of Patterson ever chose you. Hey, Uncle Bud. Uncle Bud, I just saw a messenger boy just leave here. Was that telegram for me? No, Norm, it was for you. It was for Costello. A great honor has fallen on Costello. He has been chosen Patterson's delegate to the UNO. That's right, Norman. I'm going back there and spread goodwill. Well, you've certainly got the spread for it. <laughs> Now, 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 Norman, you'll have, to treat, you'll have to treat Costello with more respect from now on. Remember, he's going to be a diplomat. And a jokes with gestures. <laughs> yes, just wait till I get to Europe. They need me over there. That continent has gone back to the horse and buggy days. I'm the only guy that can fix it. Horse and buggy days? What are you talking about? Well, somebody is horsing around over there and driving a whole world buggy. <laughs> you know, Uncle Bud, I don't know why they picked Costello as a diplomat. I'm the boy for the job. Why, everybody says I look just like Anthony Eden. You look more like heaven, Eden. <laughs> Costello, Costello's right, Norman. You could stand some weight. If you gained a little weight, you wouldn't be so lazy. But, Uncle Bud, I'm just full of energy. Can I help it if I haven't got the strength to use it? <laughs> Norman, we should be proud of Costello. He's going back to Patterson to mix with all the masters of diplomacy. Yes, I'm going to be a mix master. <laughs> I'll show them guys how to stir up things. Well, am I interrupting anything, boy? Why, it's our singing star, Susan Miller. <laughs> Susan, have you heard the news? Costello is to be Patterson's delegate to the UNO. Oh, Costello. What a diplomat you make. You're so robust, so manly, so muscular. Muscular. <laughs> Susan, I'm Atlas. Hercules. Samson and Joe Lewis and gorgeous George all rolled into one. You are? And it's awful crowded, too. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you, Costello. I'm going to give you a kiss. A gift for good luck. Now, put your arms around me. There. That's it. Gee, Susan, when I get close to you like this, something inside me seems to melt. It does? I've got to quit carrying that butter around in my money belt. <laughs> well, come on, Costello. I've made arrangements with the finest tailor in town to outfit you for your trip to the UNO beach. Well, I'll see you later, Costello. And as they say in Spanish, mañana o ama. Shoes to you. And your mama's old army shoes to you, too. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. Costello, this is the tailor, Mr. Sharkskin. Are you ready to measure Costello? <laughs> Why, yes, it'll be a pleasure to make a suit for him. What a bill. What broad shoulders. Narrow hips and long, tapering legs. <laughs> this is me over here. You're measuring the water cooler. <laughs> Mr. Sharkskin, this is Costello. He's the man that's having the pit. Really? Does he always swell up like that? <laughs> 
dark skin, one more crack like that over you, and I'll cut you on the bias and pull down your hands. <laughs> Mr. Sharkskin, do you have anything that'll fit Costello? I think so. Here, Mr. Costello, slip into this coat. That's it. There. How's that? Now, ain't that coat a little long? I can't see my shoes. Oh, do you, <laughs> do you plan on wearing shoes? <laughs> Don't be so fussy, Costello. <laughs> Uh, what that coat needs is a, a little more padding in the shoulders, that's all. A little more? You'd better take some of the padding out. Every time I raise my arm, the shoulders push my hat off. <laughs> Costello, you won't be able to wear those pink socks with that outfit. Those are not pink socks. My shorts drag a little. <laughs> all right, Mr. Sharkskin. Make the necessary alterations and send the suit to Costello's house. Fine. Good day, gentlemen. Costello, you're leaving for Patterson tonight, and we've got, uh, we've got a lot of things to do. What, for instance? Well, Costello, you'll meet all kinds of nationalities at that UNO meeting, and you'll have to converse with all of them. That won't be hard for me, Abbott. I even speak Chinese. Let me hear you say something in Chinese. Okay. Feature starts at 1 o'clock, smoking in the balcony. Price has changed at 6. What kind of Chinese is that? Grauman's Chinese. <laughs> you simpleton. French is the diplomatic language, and you've got to learn it. I'm taking you to Madame Fifi's French language school. And now, Monsieur Costello, when you arrive at the meeting, the French delegate, he will bid you welcome, and he will say, Oh, bonjour, Monsieur, que je suis enchanté de faire votre connaissance, parce que vous êtes le plus bel homme du monde. And then the delegate, he will kiss you like this. Do you mind now if I can have my own script back? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you walk in here, you don't even shut the door. Madam Fifi. You will have to forgive me. I have a very, very poor memory. Would you mind running through that again a little slower? Why, not at all, monsieur. The French delegate, he will bid you welcome. Like this, now pay attention, monsieur. He will bid you welcome like this. And he will say to you, oh, monsieur, could you please you see, and then he will kiss you like this. I'm doing all the work. He's sweating. Do me a favor, will you? What? Run over and pick up my suit. I may have to stay after school. I think I need more lessons. <laughs> you know, if you stay here and take another lesson, you, you may miss the plane. Yeah, but if I take another lesson, I won't need the plane. I'll fly to Patterson by myself. <laughs> Come, Madam Fifi, let us study. <laughs> And it's one of the requirements of a delegate to know all about history. I know all about history, Abbott. You do. I bet you don't even know who George Washington married. George Washington married Salome. <laughs> yeah, dummy. Washington and Salome lived thousands of years apart. What's the difference as long as they loved each other? Talk I... <laughs> sense. Now, Costello. Now, in diplomatic circles, they give a lot of banquets. And you've got to watch your table manners. Now, if you're not sure what fork uh, to use, wait until the hostess has picked up her fork, and then you use the same one. Nothing doing, Abbott. I tried that once. I waited to use the same fork to host the shoes, and by the time she got through with it, there was no more food left on the table. <laughs> you tell me I'm talking about the silverware they use at a banquet. Oh. As a rule, there are several different types of forks yes. set aside uh, beside your plate. Naturally. 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 <laughs> You're telling me. I went to a banquet once, and there was 15 knives, forks, and spoons set aside beside each plate. What beautiful silverware. Uh, I, I'd like to have seen it. Remind me to show it to you sometime. <laughs> Never mind that. 
Now, uh, when you get to the meeting and you are introduced to the other delegates' wives, remember to curtsy. Remember to what? Curtsy, curtsy, like this. That's a curtsy? Yes. I couldn't curtsy. I've got too much starchy in my shirtsy. <laughs> you are. Oh, I give up. Come on. Our plane leaves for Patterson in a few minutes. Now, we've got to, we've got to get to the airport. We're going to be at the UN Open meeting. Come on. <laughs> UNO convention will now come to order. Gentlemen, this is a great year for the UNO, the Undertaker's National Organization. <laughs> uh, Secretary Toombs, are all the bodies, uh, I mean, are all the members present? All but the stiff, uh, uh, <laughs> But he's due here any minute. The delegate from Patterson, huh? Greetings and salutations, gentlemen. I'm Patterson's delegate to the UNO. And it's mighty quiet in here. Let's get the jump jo joint jumping. <laughs> Just pull up a slab and sit down. <laughs> Brother Gray, dig that boy. <laughs> a lovely thought, Brother Toombs. A lovely thought. <laughs> Just a minute. Is this the peace conference? Yes, my boy. We have peace here. As a matter of fact, that's the slogan of our organization. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Mr. Toombs, place a lily in Mr. Costello's lapel, and let's get on with the meeting. Just a second. There must be some mistake. I was looking for the UNO. There is no mistake. This is the UNO, the Undertaker's National Convention. Is there anything else you wish to say? Yes, just two words. What are they? Hey! And <laughs> uh, that's not quite all, folks. Stick around a minute, and the boys will be back for a curtain call. Good news spreads fast. And it's good news that the Star Theater, featuring singer Gordon McRae, songstress Evelyn Knight, and Victor Young's orchestra, is on the air every Wednesday night over most of these same ABC stations. And what a combination of tip-top talent that means. A lilting 30 minutes of melody. Gordon McRae is a man who has a special way with a song. And he'll be singing the most popular songs of the day. Evelyn Knight, the last of the delicate air, also has a special way with a song, especially with a folk ballad. But that's not all. Victor Young's orchestra, the Jeff Alexander Chorus, are also on hand each Wednesday night to add to the entertainment. So for a gale of time, plan to join us when the Star Theater, featuring Gordon McRae, Evelyn Knight, Victor Young's orchestra, and the Jeff Alexander Chorus, is heard every Wednesday night. And that means tonight over most of these same ABC stations. And now back for a final word from ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Well, it's too bad that we made that trip all the way back to Patterson for nothing. Oh, that's all right, Abbott. I just as well... I'll get it, Abbott. Hello. Oh, hello. Uncle Mike? What? Aunt May? Congratulations. At 7 o'clock tonight? Where did it happen? Right on Maplewood Avenue? My, my. How many? Three? Well, hold everything. I'll, I'll be right there. Goodbye. Costello, what happened? My Aunt May just found a three-room apartment on Maplewood Avenue. Oh, good night. <laughs> Listen each Wednesday night of this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda, and featuring Susan Miller and Matty Malnick and his orchestra. So, goodbye until the same time next Wednesday. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.